So this is where we left off in part one. We had just found our 0.376y equals x, and then we we're going to go back and use our one remaining equation, our partial derivative with respect to lambda, that was our constraint, our 500 minus 10x minus 7.5y equals zero. Right, so we have two equations and two unknowns. I can simply substitute in and then solve for x and y, my optimal bundles. If I substitute in for x, I get 500 minus 10 times 0.376y minus 7.5y equals 0. 500 minus 3.76y minus 7.5y equals 0. I'm going to combine the y's now. So 500 minus 11.26y equals 0. I'm going to add that 11.26y to the right hand side. Divide both sides by 11.26 and I'm left with y equals 44.4. So that's my optimal amount of y to consume. I can plug that back into either of these equations. I'm just choosing the simpler one. 0.376 times 44.4 equals x or 16.7 equals x. So my optimal consumption bundle given these prices and this income for this problem is 44.4 units of y and 16.7 units of x. The one remaining thing to do is to find lambda, right? So when my constraint changes by one dollar, how much does total utility change? Now we could use either equation that contains lambda in order to do this. So. On the left hand side of the line, I've just rewritten the partial derivative with respect to x. I could equally use the partial derivative with respect to y, and that's what I've rewritten on the right hand side here. Going through each of these, I'm just going to plug in 16.7 for x and 44.4 for y. So it'll be a little work in your calculator, taking each of these terms, raising them to the appropriate exponent, and writing down what you get. But you'll eventually solve and get 0.0604 for lambda if we used the left hand side equation and 0.0607 for lambda if we used the right hand side equation. Now the difference here is due to rounding so really we might just say lambda is 0.06. Now this means when income changes by a dollar total utility changes by 0.06 units.